listen, listen. You know, I, I know. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know about me. I don't like trials. I don't like trials. I don't really like tribulation. But I would love it if every day was sunshine. Now, we just came through a whole bunch of cold weather. I, I do not like the cold weather. I would rather be in San Diego. I lived in San Diego for three years in the Marines. I've never played something. I would rather, San Diego, it's like, I don't, it's like, it was sunshiny, like, all the time. It was always so nice. I always have to move back out there. But I can't, because God has me here. And, 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 and I, I wish my life was like, I wish that every day was sunshiny and bright. And, you know, I didn't have no trials, no tribulation, no heartache, no pain. But, but, that's not, conforming me to the image of his son. See, see, if, if the son, who is Jesus, who is the only and true and living God, went through trials and tribulations and being tested, not tempted, that, that people say Jesus was tempted. He wasn't tempted. You can't tempt God. Jesus is God. Uh, let me get, 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 get that straight. I know that, that's another mis misconception. And, and, and people say, well, you know, and you know, unfortunately, you gotta watch when you're reading even translation, uh, because uh, 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 a lot of times the, the translations, you know, are, are not accurate. That's why you gotta know your own Hebrew and Greek for yourself. Uh, 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 but James chapter one surely says. Uh, 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 God, so, uh, uh, James 1, 12, blessed is the man that endure temptation, all right? For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Okay, that's one of the crowns, one of the five crowns, crowns of life, okay? Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Watch this, verse 13, 113. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Watch this. James chapter 1, verse 13, For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So, you know, the translation say, you know, God was tempted. He was uh, brought up into the, up into the high uh, uh, temple area, uh, the high uh, hills, and uh, he was tempted of the devil. You can't tempt God. It's special. It should say he was tested. Cannot, it says it. God cannot be tempted. James 1 13. For God cannot be tempted with evil. So the enemy tested him, but to tempt Jesus, because he is God, is blasphemy. You can't, Jesus cannot be tempted. That is a joke. Jesus made Lucifer. There's nothing that Lucifer can even think or do. He, he is. Is nothing he is. So God cannot be tempted. And watch this. Neither tempted he any man. For every person, man, woman, boy, or girl, dog, or cat, when, but every person is tempted when he or she is drawn away of his or her own lust and enticed. James 1.15 then when love has conceived is bring forth sin and sin when it is finished bring it forth death and Jesus cannot be tempted so even when we fall into temptation and listen God allows the test even when we do fall into temptation and even the test that we do endure and the test that we overcome and sometimes we fail the test but many tests we're going to overcome and we're going to be victorious but watch this. Even when we don't pass the test, mm, it is still conforming us to the image of his son because it's making us better the next time we go through the test. See, you get tired of flunking after a while. And after a while, you buckle down and, and you adhere to what it says in Matthew 6. Three things he said to fast, pray, and give them to the poor. These are not uh, uh, fly-by-night statements. These are mandatory. These are mandates. These are not suggestions. And a lot of times in our life, and our walk with the Lord, 
we don't adhere. See, we don't adhere to the hard thing. You know, many of us, we go to church and, you know, uh, uh, we go to the average one in the middle neighborhood church and we listen to Pastor Weber and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and this person, this pastor doesn't uh, uh, teach fasting, praying, and giving to the poor. Oh, and one more, the fourth thing, when Christ left, what did he say? He said he married the life. He said, go out and tell the world, to, to every creature throughout the world, and know I'll be with you always until the end of the age, to the end of the world, to the end of time. To Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. These, this is, these are mandates. These are not flaws. These are not suggestions. So, when we find ourselves not passing the test, uh, it might be a test, or we know we can end you know, once again, his grace and his mercy follows us. Even in the failed time, I know I failed the test. I failed the test. I'm like, wow, Lord, you still love me? But his mercy and his grace is still following me. So that eventually I was able to pass the test. Oh, guess what? The next one comes. There's another one coming. But I am more than a conqueror. And I know if he got me through the last test by fasting, praying, and his worry, and, and going out and making sure I'm sharing my faith, all these things strengthen me. See, if we share my faith with someone else, then what happens is that person, they're, in, they're strengthened by you. And as you're strengthened by giving out that testimony, listen, Nothing, I don't know about y'all, but nothing makes me feel better. It's when I know I'm looking for somebody at my job, at the supermarket, walking down the street, playing basketball in the gym, you know, uh, you know, you know, we're just witnessing by just talking about Jesus, bringing up a conversation, you know, and Jesus having me come up for my Muslim brothers and my double witness brothers. Uh, it, it doesn't matter to my atheist brothers who don't know, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Nothing feels better afterwards, man. I, man, I feel my back is good. Huh? That's a good feeling. That's a good feeling. But unfortunately, in a lot of our churches, these teachings that Jesus taught are not being taught. You know, an iron shop an iron scripture fellow. Uh, it, it, he or she that wins souls is why. This is the travelers. Listen. So the tests are going to come. The trials and tribulations are going to come. But when we're fasting, when we're praying, when we're eating daily, daily bread, huh? when we fast and pray, uh, 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 when, when we're giving to the poor, when we eat this word daily, and when we're sharing our faith, man, hmm, those five things, man, keep, they, they, they keep me, they stabilize me, they make my life whole, you know, and, and I, you know, when I'm running on empty, it's usually, uh, uh, I know, I know for a fact, when I'm running on empty, it's because I haven't been doing one of those five things, so I, I need to make one of the, I need to make all of those five things prior in my life. And I need to share that with my, with my fellow uh, believers and unbelievers. Listen, 29, 829, for whom he did formerly, he also did, did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He is the first one to suffer and to die and to shed his blood for forgiveness of our sin, the first and the only one. But my trials and my tribulations are conforming me to be like him and to his enemy. That's why he allows trials. That's why he allows tribulations. That's why he allows heartache. That's why he allows pain. Because it conforms me and it molds me and it shapes me. And the potter takes the clay and put it on the potter's wheel. He's forming and he's shaping it. And when he messes it up, he smashes it down and he starts all over again. So don't be in despair when you mess up. He's 
like, oh, man. He, he has to sometimes, uh, 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 well, all the time. You know, when we mess up, he starts all over again. But Carter, he, he smashes it, and he starts it all over again. And he keeps working with you, and he keeps working with you. Man, as we go through, he's conforming us to the image of his son, of who he is. Verse 38, 20, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Romans 8, 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. Remember, our lives are predestined for victory. We're predestined to be winners, never losers. And even when we do use by something we've done, said, sent, even when we do use that way, we're not totally, it's, it's not, it's really, I mean, it's not a law. It's, if we look at it, and if we look at what God's trying to do, what is he trying to do? He's trying to drive me to my knees. I need to hit my knees. Lord, forgive me. Mold and shake me. Give me your power so I won't do it again. Well, son, you got, are you in that word daily? Can you just stay on daily bread? Are you drinking the word or watching the word about the word? Are you drinking that water daily? Are you eating that word daily? Are you praying daily? Are you praying without ceasing? This is what gives, gives us the strength to always be conquerors. More than all he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. More than all he did predestinate, then he also called. And when he called, then he also justified. And when he justified, then he also glorified. He's predestined us in verse 30. He's predestined our predestiny. And eternity path was to be great. You are great in God. Then he also called, and he called us out of the morass of humanity. And as Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, he called him by name. He calls you by name. He calls you out of the world of death. He calls you out of the grave. He calls you out of darkness into a marvelous light. That's why we beckon you. That's why I can't say, oh, Lord, I found the Lord. Oh, yeah, I didn't find him. He found me. I didn't call. I called him to the Lord. It's just, it's just those that call him to the Lord, those are saved. But the only reason I called to him, because he predestined me and he tried to pass to do as such, to do so. That's why I call upon him. Because I need him. Out of darkness to his mother. And then he says, who he called, then he also justified by his precious blood, by the blood that Jesus, God Almighty, Jesus is God. And his precious blood justifies. And who he justified, Tell me also glorify. Listen, I don't have to wait to get the glory to get glorified. He's glorified me. When the day he put in the call on him, that day when I said, Jesus saved me, that day when I confessed my sin to him, that day when I confessed that Jesus was God, that day when I confessed his blood is the only way to glory. When I confess that his blood is the only power, the power is blood. That day that I confess that his blood is no forgiveness of sin, unless it's the shedding of blood, that day, he also glorified me. I don't have to wait till I get there. I don't have to wait till. Ah, he's giving me glory right here. That's why I'm more than a conqueror. I'm glorifying him right now. I have to wait till I get the glory. Glory, he put his glory in me by his Holy Spirit. That's why I glorify him. Because glory lives in me. The glory of God in the front of the Holy Spirit. God, matter of fact, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit dwells and lives in you. Ah, I'm glorified right now. Right now. As I live, move, and have my being. And else, 